Today, I'm going to show you if you should underwrite this house differently if you're going to flip it or turn it into a rental. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey everyone, welcome to the 400th episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. As always, I'm your host, James Wise, and this is the show on Holton Wise TV where I work on your deals, work on deals for you guys, mano a mano, right? And today I am going to be analyzing this home, 3447 West 65th in Cleveland for my man Aaron from Utah. Now, Aaron, in MLS Search analysis show number 360. I analyzed this property for you because you wanted to flip it, right? You're thinking about flipping some low cost properties, right? So I ran the numbers on it and gave you the uh, expectation of what you would need to pick up the property for and how things would play out for this to be a profitable and reasonable flip for you. Now, since that time, brother, you had reached out to me and you said, hey, man, you know what? Can you redo the numbers? Can you do this again? But based upon uh, having it be a rental property, I might be able to to work it that way, right? So we're going to do the numbers on this one again. Uh, but this time, we're going to focus on turning this property into what I like to call the slow motion burr, right? If you've heard the term burr before, buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat, right? Okay, you buy a property, fix it up, ideally. When you bring in the bank to refinance it, the value of the property is more than the cost to buy a property and fix it up, right? And somewhere in the middle there, one of those R's, you slapped a tenant in there, right? This particular house has a below market tenant in it at 725, right? And that was part of the crux of picking it up at a low ball price to flip it. Now, when I did the numbers for you on the flip, okay? Our ideal goal was to sell it for 75k. We needed to purchase it at 35,000, a 20,500 dollar renovation. Then we also had to factor in the sales cost, which is 5250, the closing cost 1250, right? So total costs were going to be 62,000 and that would allow you to make a 13,000 dollar profit, right? Uh, in this chart here, you can see the high to the low end uh, of what we're looking at as far as the types of repairs, right? But 20500 should be what it is. Now, what you want to do now, though, dude, you want to do a rental, right? So we could do this as a burr deal, and you could actually afford to pay more money for this particular property, right? Because here's the thing. When you're trying to flip houses like this, right, not every seller is going to agree uh, that they should sell you the property for the prices we need to buy them to make them profitable flips, right? And maybe also $13,000 in enough profit for you to get your beak wet, right? So when we are doing... A rental, a burr, we could underwrite it differently. It could still make more money. Would this property make money as a flip if we bought it for 45? No, not really, right? It would be pointless, right? It would be stupid. But as a burr deal, you could totally afford to pay 45K, meaning more of these properties we're looking at are going to result in closed deals, guys, right? Because follow me on this one, Aaron. If you bought it for 45,000 instead of 35,000, you could buy it for 45,000, right? Renovation, 20500 Nothing changes there, right? Now you're all into the investment for 65500 And I call it the slow motion burr, right? Because that renovation might not need to happen immediately. You pick it up at forty five. It's a $725 a month inherited tenant. I want you to continue collecting that tenant's rent until uh, it is time to go ahead and increase their rent, right? Uh, so I think they're out a month to month, right? So you essentially got to collect after it closes. You'd probably have to collect like one month's worth of rent. We'd shoot them out the notice, which tells them the rent's going up in another 30 days. Blah, 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 right? You're probably going to collect the 725 for like, I don't know, between two and three months, okay? You can give them notice to increase the rent. Do I think you should go to market rent, which is $1,000 right away? No, I don't think so. I think you should probably just go ahead and keep collecting that rent, uh, 
until the tenant moves out and you're going to be able to collect that rent for as long as humanly possible by slowly increasing the rent. So I would try to go up like 50 and then another 50 a year later, another 50, so on and so forth, right? Because, uh, you know, if you pick it up at 45, you're making a little bit of money uh, as far as the cash flow, right? Why would you be in a rush to stop the income stream just so you could toss another $20,500 at us, right? That wouldn't make any sense, right? So keep collecting the money, right? Slow motion burr, right? Buy it, do no renovations, continue to uh, collect that money, slowly increasing the rent because we know our cap here is going to be $1,000 in rent. That's the market rent, right? So eventually, when it gets to the point uh, where that tenant moves out, then you do this renovation, okay? Or, you know, I guess if the tenant if the tenant uh, decided to stay and they were just paying 1000 fuck yeah, dude. Now you got a $45,000 rental. You're collecting $1,000 a month in rent. Continue to rock that out. Do not do the renovation until you get a vacancy. Once you get a vacancy, though, same renovation applies, right? $20,500, all right? So you're all in $65,500, okay? $65,500, new tenant, $1,000 a month rental, Section 8, beautiful. Of that $1,000 that comes in, I would anticipate you spending an approximate amount of fifty-seven sixty per year. Every year is going to be different, brother, right? Some years are good. Some years are bad. Uh, but that is what you can anticipate for the expected performance on this, right? Leaving you with an NOI of sixty-two forty. Now, you're all in at sixty-five five. You're collecting all this rent valuation, right? I told you in the flip. Our ARV, 75K. Same scenario here, right? 75K. Right, the ARV hasn't changed. Just because you bought it for 10k more does not mean the ARV changes, right? So you spent 65.5. The new appraisal. We don't do the appraisal till the renovation is done, right? Because they're not going to appraise it for more unless we do a renovation, right? So you spent 65.5. They appraise it for 75. Instead of selling it, you're getting the cash out. So that's 56,250 coming back to you as a mortgage leaving you with only $9,250 in the deal. After you pay off that new $56,000 mortgage monthly, right? The cost on that is 237. That leaves you with free cash flow of 283 a month or almost 3400 a year, which is a 38% return on your investment, right? So, you can try to do it as a flip at 35. You could do it as a burr at 35 if you could get the seller to accept 35. But the cool thing is... Hey lenders, are you looking to be part of our referral program? If so, send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com. <laughs> you can also afford to pay an additional $10,000 if you plan on keeping the asset and still make a ridiculous return on your money. So if you guys are out there thinking, should I flip, should I rent, remember, you actually have multiple options, right? Of course, if you could do the burr strategy and pick it up at 35, fuck yeah. But if you can afford to pay more, be more competitive, you will have more opportunities to take deals down. So you should keep both of these strategies in your tool belt, man. Have flips available, but also have the ability uh, to do it into a long-term rental property investment. And when you work with my team, you have both of those at your disposal because we have the ability to renovate all these houses for you, whether they're renovate to sell or renovate to rent. We also have the property management here in place, right? You don't have to try to create your own property management business. We have already done that for you. In addition, we've got insurance as well as title work. So, Aaron, that is how you analyze this deal as both a flip and now as a rental. Everyone else, if you like what I did for Aaron and that sounds like it's interesting to you and you want to get started investing here in the Cleveland market, shoot my team an email, sales at holtonweiss.com. Give us your number. We'll walk you through the process. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.